Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Unique Ways with Thomas Gerard, an audio podcast. I'm super excited for our guest today. Um, I'll introduce him. He works mostly in Poland, but also travels frequently. His activity in the field of education enables him to distance himself from his work. In 27 and 2008, he lectured on visual communication in Mexico. In 2012 and 2013, he taught the same subjects in New Delhi. Um, and starting from 2013, he's been a lecturer at, and I'm going to mispronounce this, the Poznan School of Form. Um, please join me in welcoming um, Filip Zuborski, who I believe is coming to us from Spain. Hey, Filip, how's it going? Hi, Thomas. How are you? Uh, really good. Yeah, correct. I'm in Spain right now. Great. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot for the invitation. And it's not nice to catch up with you after such a long break. Thanks. Yeah. You ready for 20 questions? Uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, do it. Let's get on with it. Okay. Number one, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What do you do? Okay. So uh, I like to call myself a graphic designer and I'm an educator, just like you mentioned. And I'm also a father of two daughters. Um, so early on in my career, I got interested in teaching uh, visual communication. And that's how we uh, met uh, with you in India, in New Delhi. And right now I've been teaching for over 15 years. Uh, I'm heading the communication design department at School of Form. Uh, you pronounced it perfectly. And it moved though from Poznan, which is a different city in Poland, to Warsaw, the capital right now. It's part of the SWPS uh, University, which is the largest private university in Poland. Uh, and I'm also a partner and creative director of the very small design agency called Type 2. It's uh, unfortunately not the best name. It has to do with the fact that there are two partners uh, and our main focus uh, is typography, but it doesn't have anything to do with type two diabetes, but I guess it might be a little bit confusing. Uh, and uh, what else? Well, I specialize in designing complex visual identities, uh, identity systems, uh, but I design all sorts of different things, uh, printed matter, mm, editorial design, packaging, movie titles, um, all sorts of different things. And I guess in, in general, I like to create. Great. So that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, just a note for the audience, um, you know, Philippe is coming to us from Spain today, um, but he uh, does most of his work in Poland, from what I understand. You know, a previous guest, Isabella Sroka, came to us from Poland as well. Um, and uh, and that's a great episode. You should definitely check it out. Yes, uh, Isa is a very good friend of mine. Very good designer. Great. Um, question two: What's a key piece of knowledge that makes you different? That is a difficult one. Um, so uh, I'm not sure, but well, one of the things is that I'm I'm still an active designer, and I believe that this helps me being a successful uh, educator, teacher. And I have hands-on experience with clients, international clients, and, and I can share it with my students. Another thing that I can think of is that uh, I believe that over the years I've gained some experience from living and working in many different countries. I've lived in India for a while with you and Mexico, China, US and Spain right now. So this give, gives me potentially some broader perspective. I, I'm not sure. Um, another note for the audience, you know, as Philippe mentioned, uh, we met in, uh, in New Delhi um, as lecturers in a visual communication department at a design school there um, years ago. Um, and, you know, I came to know Philippe and his work well, and I would say uh, he's uh, definitely an all-star graphic designer. So, um, yeah, yeah, no doubt on that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Number three, why this, of all things, why do you do what you do? 
Mm, okay. Well, in my case, it wasn't a very romantic story. I kind of knew what I was going to do in, uh, since I was a little kid. Uh, although at some point I wanted to study architecture and I was preparing myself to for the exams to, to enter the architecture school. But before the exam, I figured out that I'm more interested in communication design, so I didn't even I didn't even uh, try, and I went to study communication design. Mm, I don't have any close family members who were designers. Um, the only one was my aunt, uh, who passed away when I was a little boy. And she was she was quite a successful illustrator, and she illustrated a lot of books for kids in Poland. Mm, and when she passed away, I inherited all of her paints and brushes. And I guess that this, uh, that could have been this decisive moment. I think I was like seven years old at the time. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, what I like about graphic design is that it's, uh, that it's so available. It's like for everybody, it's everywhere. And it's not so much pathos around graphic design as there is in the discourse of art, I believe. And I kind of like this uh, artisanal approach. I don't consider myself an artist. I like to call myself a designer. Um, well, I also like teaching um, and it, forces me to verbalize and organize the, the design processes. It's, I, I find it fascinating and demanding at the same time, very demanding sometimes, because uh, it's, uh, well, you, you probably know that because you're, you're an educator yourself as well, but it's, it's a totally different thing knowing how to design something and knowing how to teach someone how to design something. So, so yeah, but it's a great, privilege to be able to work with the next generation of designers. I'm quite excited about it. So yeah, this, this is why of, I do it. That's great. A lot of our um, New Delhi group kind of went on to be successful um, educators. And I wonder if um, why they do what they do is because of that time in New Delhi. Because of you and me, you think? No, from New, New <laughs> Delhi, sorry, uh, in general, okay. yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but it's good to good to know that they're successful. I think so. Um, number four, what does your future look like? I have absolutely no idea, and uh, and I like it that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, well, like in general, I'm a bit worried about the future, like with the climate change, pandemic, uh, and other global crisis, war in Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of easy to be pessimistic uh, nowadays, I suppose. But uh, on the other hand, uh, well, we, we live in the best uh, times in human history, um, I think. Uh, and when we talk about design, I believe that in a sense, design gives us a chance to kind of exercise the future. Um, in my opinion, the best designers are always the ones that uh, are rehearsing the future in some way. So I believe that like anticipating, not just reacting uh, to, what, to what we have around will be the most important ability of a designer uh, in, in the future. And um, yeah, so we shouldn't just limit ourselves to solving problems. We should ask new questions and seek new, seek, seek new creative solution or approaches. When you ask me about the very near future, I have some interesting projects coming up, some books, oh, excuse me. Um, and uh, I will also continue uh, working at the School of Form. I'm also working on my PhD 
And one last uh, thing is the, um, I'm involved in the project called Accelerate. It's an exciting international project exploring the use of uh, immersive technology in the field of art and design education. Uh, it's, uh, we're doing it together with uh, different universities in the UK, Ireland, our university in Poland, and two other universities in Ukraine. It's a long and ambitious two-year Erasmus Plus funded project that with the aim to develop uh, some innovative methodologies and tools for, for immersive uh, learning. I've been, like my part, my involvement in the project lately was, um, was a diagnostic report about the impact of the pandemic and, and the shift of online education. So we're looking at the advantages and disadvantages uh, of, of online teaching and, and the challenges for the future. So, uh, so yeah, this is, this is what the future looks like. Sounds great. Um, I'm excited for this next question. So um, let's talk about location. How does the notion of place play into what you do? I don't know if you want to talk about Poland. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I've mentioned already that I've lived in and worked in many different locations. And that is what inspires me, I guess, like getting to know new places, new interesting people, um, new perspectives on design life in general. And I've spent most of my life in Poland, that's where I was born. But um, right now I'm in. I'm in Spain and I'm based on the Spanish island Tenerife, uh, one of the Canary Islands. So we'll see how that affects me on the longer term. I've been here for, we've been here only for, for just a couple of months. And, but so far I'm definitely enjoying the climate and beautiful landscape and joyful, friendly people around. And I, I do believe that the place that reminds to a great extent what we do and how we do it, who we are. Um, and um, yeah, it's not only place, it's, it's also the people that surround us in, in this place. And one more thing that comes to my mind is that, um, that my design practice is very much based on the notion of context. Uh, so I believe that in order to do a good project, we need to understand the context. Um, and, and this is an interesting and exciting part of the work of a graphic designer. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's super cool that you're in Spain right now and taking this call. Um, it's not particularly easy to negotiate time zones and timings like that. We really appreciate you uh, being on the show so far. Um, number six, if you had to start from scratch, what advice would you give your former younger self? Well, I can think uh, of a few. The first one would be to forget about the fear of failure. Um, unfortunately, I'm a perfectionist and it's not a, not a very good thing. And the other one would be to never stop enjoying what I do, um, to remember to keep playing and uh, to trust your guts, not to, so that you don't overthink everything too, too much. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, number seven, what's a day in your life like? Generally quite normal, I suppose. I wake up early uh, and I walk my kids to school. It's a very good way to wake up. It's, it's a nice walk. Uh, if I manage somehow to get up earlier, I also like to do a short yoga session, but, uh, but usually I'm late. And then when I get back, this is my time to work. Most of my work I do remotely from my little office at home. And I divide my time between designing and teaching. 
So my day is usually filled up with a lot of online meetings uh, and um, and what else? Uh, well, the last semester I was also giving classes here at the Universidad de la Laguna, ULL, uh, here in Tenerife. Uh, so I was traveling there uh, every once in a while. I like to squeeze in some creative work every day, if possible. That kind of keeps me sane. And um, and since we moved to the island, I like the fact that we spend a lot more time outdoors. So in the afternoons or on the weekends, we try to spend time with the kids, uh, doing sports, exploring the island, going climbing, hiking. Or if we just uh, don't have a lot of time, we just go for a swim. So yeah, and then we eat something and go to sleep again. Awesome. Sounds like a great day. You know, I imagine that um, some of your day must be dedicated to your role with Type 2, the studio that, uh, that you're a part of. Um, I think as we go into the uh, later questions, uh, we can kind of go into that in more detail. Right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, no, so it's, it's part uh, designing work, part, part teaching. Awesome. Okay. And co congratulations on, um, on uh, school in Spain taking you on. That's super awesome. <laughs> um, number eight, lifelong learning is a popular topic these days. How do you stay up to date? Um, well, I try to uh, stay up to date. I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing about being a designer, graphic designer, that, that you learn all the time, basically, that every project is different. And uh, and also working at the university kind of requires me to keep studying and staying up to date. Contact with the students helps, I suppose. And I try to read a lot. Um, but on the other hand, I kind of have a feeling that there's so much going on these days and we have such an easy and instant access to, to it all, to all the news that it's kind of hard to keep up. Uh, and you have to be careful not to go crazy in the meanwhile, trying to stay up to date. Great. Um, number nine, what tools do you use? Are you more digital, more analog? Mm, well, I like to combine uh, digital and analog. Um, I guess you can call me a digital nomad because I've been working remotely since the pre-COVID times already. Um, I am fascinated with the technology. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an expert in all of those new tools, but, uh, but for example, this Accelerate project that I'm involved in uh, with about the immersive tech, VR, XR, that can totally revolutionize our work and way of uh, delivering education. So that's, uh, that's totally fascinating, but kind of scary at the same time. Uh, but yeah, I love, I still love the analog and, uh, and I try to spend less time sitting glued to my screen. And after a long break, I got interested again in printing and in graphic arts. Uh, I very much enjoy silk screen printing and I've been running silk screen uh, workshops lately and it's uh, it has been great, it's very refreshing and fun, healthy, I think. So yeah, I, I basically combined the two. Awesome. Um, just for the audience, a quick note on digital. Uh, one of our previous guests, Dr. Philippe Pasquier, runs the Artificial Intelligence Lab at Simon Fraser University and is an associate dean there. Um, his episode is super great if you want to learn about an artificial intelligence. Um, number 10, how do you deal with work-life balance? <laughs> yeah, well, it's not, it's not easy. Uh, but I think that being a father helps, or at least uh, that's my case, that children help you prioritize things and you need to like, keep your balance and stick to the schedule if you want to survive. And I've, I've always been quite 
well organized, but now it's with, with my two daughters, it's, um, it's just another level, I must say. And you need to be very well organized in order to be able to do anything, basically. Um, and what else uh, helps me is climbing. I'm a, uh, I'm a, f I'm fanatic about climbing, and I think it's a, it's a great way to stay focused and rest mentally as well, because you can't think of anything else while climbing. So yeah, great. We're just over halfway here, number eleven. If you weren't doing what you do now, what would you be doing? I think I would be a doctor, uh, even though I know that I wouldn't be able to be a doctor. But um, but if I were, I wouldn't have uh, so many doubts if what I'm doing was uh, like has any sense whatsoever. And I sometimes struggle with the fact that you can live well without good graphic design. But sometimes it seems to be just a kind of luxury think um, and I'm aware that graphic designers in general have little influence on the fate of the world but we can still try to make it a better I don't know more friendly more sustainable place so that's that's what I'm trying to stick to awesome yeah. um, number 12 what would you not like to do career-wise Mm, I don't know if there's anything. Well, I'm, I'm afraid of routine. I would like to do the same thing over and over without any potential to learn something new, I guess. So, yeah. Great. Uh, 13, what's your favorite word, quote, or sentence? Uh, well, I guess it's collaboration uh lately that's my that's my favorite word i very much enjoy collaborative work especially with people that are smarter than me and preferably non-designers mm, i see a great yeah no i'm definitely also trying to reach non-designers these days i feel like <laughs> i spend so much time talking to designers that uh, i would love to be able to talk to the average person exactly and and i i think that this ability to work in uh in an interdisciplinary team is is today or will be in the future a very basic crucial skill of of every designer and this is what i try to explain my students and so so yeah collaboration Great. I thought about the quote as well, and I have this one quote that I really like um, by Paul Rand, the design is so simple, that's why it's so complicated. <laughs> I love it. And um, number 14, what's your least favorite word, quote, or sentence? I don't have any. Uh, I guess I try not to remember bad quotes. Um, if I had to pick one word that I have a problem with. It's uh, it's design or like designer thing, designer object, uh, meaning that uh, I don't know it was designed by some famous designer, which is uh, kind of a total misunderstanding of of, of design. It's all about because uh, designs everything's designed, right? Like everything made by uh, people it's ubiquitous i don't know how to pronounce that word um, and um, yeah well the fact that not everything is well designed that's a different story but uh, but i don't i kind of have this the, the problem with the term designer thing designer objects and it's even more complicated in polish because we have our own terms but we also use the word design uh spelt uh, just like you spell it in english and spelt in polish which makes it even more complicated to describe what what designers do um yeah. cool in choosing in choosing design there um or designer there um you know i wonder if i mean for me like 
it would probably be similar, but I would probably pick a word like ornamentation or maybe specifically decoration. Like that's a word that I don't like very much. Decoration. Um, is, that, uh -huh. is that what you mean by design, like a decorative design? Um, not really. No, I meant more that, uh, you know, like a designer book or a designer chair, right? Mm. Something like uh, designed by some famous designer versus mm. design and how I understand it, it's not about not about that nice okay um if you had to pick one word to describe yourself what would you choose mm, I thought of restless because uh, I just can't stay in one place I like to be on the move and I like to be doing things and I like to get things done so that's that's why restless. I also need a lot of physical activity uh, in order to be able to uh, rest. Uh, so I just can't lay down on the couch so far. Um, and if I don't go climbing often enough, I get anxious. Um, so yeah, that'd be restless. But I can think of uh, other like perfectionist or nervous, but let's not get into it. 16, what keeps you up at night? Uh, my kids, but I don't know if that's what you meant by asking the question. Uh, I don't know if you meant uh, what am I worried about? So, well, there's, there's been plenty of reasons to be worried about, but um, worrying solves nothing. And uh, I try to remind myself of that quite often. Uh, I don't know what keeps me up at night. Good company or, you know, some good uh, book or movie or good wine uh, can keep me up at night. Great. Uh, Besides final... the kids. Yeah, no, those are all great answers. Yeah, that one's... Uh... That one's up for interpretation a bit. I think the literal and the more abstract answers are both really great. Um, final okay. stretch here, number 17, what's a dream you're chasing? Well, generally to be happy, I guess. Do meaningful work, whatever that means. And uh, being a great dad to my children, to grow as an individual and and become a better person. Uh, that's that's the dream. Sounds like a good one. Um, number 18, what inspires you? Well, here I'm afraid I'm not gonna be very original. Uh, I don't have a very good answer uh, here. I, I get inspired by people, places, art, nature, um, everyday life, ordinary things. Uh, vernacular typography um, when you talk about my like everyday work. Awesome. Um, 19, any advice you'd like to share? Not yet, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at uh, giving advice. Uh, well, I'm, I'm working, one of the projects that I'm working right now uh, has to do with the with the different rules to live by. Um, so kind of what you're asking. Uh, it has to do with the collaboration as well. So I'm doing this series of workshops uh, using silkscreen and risograph, risograph, and with students from different universities in different countries. Um, and we're looking at local rules of so-called good life. And so with, with the aim to research on different, I don't know, approaches to design and, and life in general, mm, I'm looking at similarities and differences in not only those rules, but also the aesthetics in those different locations. Um, I've done the first session here at ULL in Tenerife. I'm going to be doing the next one uh, in Poland in the fall, probably, and hopefully there are more to come next year. So maybe when I finish the project on what's important in life, um, 
in those different parts of the world, I'll be able to tell you more about some good piece of advice, hopefully. Great, and I think a lot of people will want to jump on this number 20. How can our listeners keep tabs on you? Um, how can we check out what you're doing? Uh, well, you can check our website of our agency. It's uh, type two, type number two dot PL from Poland. And um, unfortunately, we're not social media ninjas, but we have the Instagram account, which is type to underscore design. And I would also invite you to check out uh, the School of Farm website. You can just Google School of Farm and it should show up. Great. Well, thanks so much, Philippe. That's super awesome. Um, you know, I think it's particularly inspiring, you know, that you're in Spain and kind of working from there um, to kind of encourage this dream that um, we're in a new world where you can work from anywhere. Um, and kind of uh, be successful at it. Um, you know, great to reconnect um, and uh, and hear from you. Um, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you, Thomas. It was a pleasure. And thanks again for the invitation. And uh, enjoy the rest of the summer if you're in the northern hemisphere. Thanks so much.